you with this shit, make you feel it all in your toes. Hot shit, got all my people in red clothes. Tell them I'm at the force when I formulate my flows. If you don't know, you're messing with the Rickle Player Pro. Like, yeah. You really wanna party with me? Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Walking This Way MTAC Wars Podcast. This is a special edition. We're doing a noon edition today, of course. I am Furman Jackson. We're going to broadcast once again out of the DFW. That's Dallas for first test. But everybody wants to know what that means. Very excited. Very honored to have a very special guest. To a matter of fact, our feature guest and my special guest co host this afternoon as well. She took time on her vision schedule all the way out of Houston, Texas. Uh, Shala, how you been doing? I know you've been having a very productive schedule and you're doing a lot of great things as well. Changing lives, helping lives, and all the other great stuff. So how have you been? What's been going on? I know you've been doing a lot, a lot of work, of course, in Texas, outside of Texas. So what else been going on with you? What's up, Furman Jackson and walking his ways, uh, Impact Voice. Good to see everyone, Furman. I am fantastic. So glad to be on the show with you today. I am so grateful for just being able to be on your platform and just share not only the love of God, but any of the knowledge that I have as a licensed financial professional and just being, you know, 48 years old in this world and the wisdom that God has allowed me to uh, impart into your audience today. And I'm so super excited about our guest today, Mr. Bo Wright. You know, I'm excited for this incredible um, inspiration that he's going to impart in us with us today, uh, Furman. So how you been? It's good to see you, brother. To God be the glory, man. Too. Everything's right on schedule. Everything's right on schedule. So and grateful to be here. Said, and that's what it's all about. Like I said, let me go ahead and introduce us. Like I said, our guest um, this afternoon is a former legendary Alabama football player, NFL and AFL athlete, ball right, of course. He is a notable figure in the world of football. Wright was selected by the Buffalo Bills in the seventh round of the 1988 NFL draft and went on to play for the Bills and the Indianapolis Colts. At his time in the NFL, he joined an arena football league, Tampa Bay Storm. Unfortunately, on December 1st, 1991, Wright was shot in the back of, his, in the, of the leg while visiting his parents in Mobile, Alabama, which is my hometown, of course. This incident led him to experience a period of depression and involved in harmful activities. However, Wright has since made a positive transformation in his life by giving back to the community and sharing his inspiring story to help others. And I want to share this, Shiloh. I actually met Mr. Wright at his lowest point. He was incarcerated while I was working for the Mobile County Sheriff Department. And that's what I met him at. And people say, yeah, he's a football player. He played for the Buffalo Bills in the late 80s. And um, he was well known around the city of Mobile. And I met him at his lowest point when he was in the work release program and um, based at that time, he was at the darkest time in his life. But today um, he has truly transformed his life. Um, Shiloh, uh, he got a book that he's working on to share his story. Uh, and the name of this episode is called From Tragedy to Glory. And we went ahead, I guess, go ahead and introduce himself. I knew I did an introduction, but, uh, but right, go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience here on the Walking This Way Impact Wars podcast. And after that, I'm a gentleman, so I'm let Shiloh kick out some questions to you as well. So go ahead and introduce yourself here on this great, great Wednesday afternoon. Wow, man, that, that was awesome, man. Thanks for having me here. You know, and I just I look at it as an opportunity to um to share with with, with God's people what what you know what He's done in my life. And from the depths of, of, of destruction that he's brought me to from being living on the streets to now living in the suburbs and with a beautiful SUV and just to give me more hope uh, for a brighter future and a better day to be an, an, uh, uh, to be the role model and the icon that that God created me to be, you know, that's that's. That's all I want to do is be a better person every day. I want to, you know, I had a coach. He's always say, get a little bit better every day, every day. I want to get a little bit better every day that I can sh sprinkle it on somebody else, you know, to make this a better place to live, better community to live in, better city, better country, a better nation. That's all I want to do. At the end of the day, Mr. Jackson, my only, the only thing I want to hear God say is you did a good job today. That's the only thing that matters to me. Nothing else really matters, you know. As as long as I hear him say, "You did a good job today." 
So thanks that's for having cool. me here. Man, that's what's up. So like I said, I'm kicking off with my sister. I'm being a gentleman. So like I said, I know she, I sent her, I sent her your information via uh DM, you know, so she get a glimpse on what we're doing today. And I know she got some questions she wanted to run on ask you. So go ahead, Shiloh, with your questions. You know, you All know, right. I feel I'm smiling a lot. I don't know why, but there's such a great energy already on the show, and I feel like I'm just yeah. smiling. My cheeks are probably gonna be hurting later on today. <laughs> But, you know, you know, Bo, you know, I've been in radio for I've, I was in radio for eight years. And so I do understand when you have a guest come on and when you're going to interview a guest, it's important to know a bit more about the guest. Right. And so I did a little Googling on the little Googler there and I learned a bit more about you and I got more excited about your story. So we wow. understand that right now you're walking in power and you're walking in your purpose and you're helping the youth and you're doing those things. But but let's go back because I think it's important that we go back to know, you know, where, where you came from. You know, you're the oldest of you're the youngest of seven. Right. Yeah. And you had two parents in the household. Your parents both worked, um, worked consistently together. And you mentioned that you never went without anything. Right. You had okay. the nice home. You had the parents in the house. You ate well. You knew nice people and all of those things. So how important would you say is it to literally have both parents in the house? Because there's a lot of broken homes nowadays, right? There's a lot of single parents and there's a lot of things that the people that children don't get because they don't have both fam both parents. So how important it was it for you to have your mom and dad in your life? Wow. That is, you know, <laughs> and when I was in medicine school, my pastor, Pastor Joe, down there at Mount Hebron in Mobile, Alabama, he used to always say that the Spirit of God, it'll search the audience and it'll tell you what to say. So it had to search it and tell you what to ask me because I had it in my notes <laughs> of things that I wanted to I wanted to speak on, 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 on family, because family ain't nothing like family. Family is the backbone to community mm -hmm. community is the backbone to the the, the 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 area we live in and and if we all got together in family because i heard people say it takes the whole village to raise the kid and that's so true because i'll tell you what speaking of family and this goes out to all the single moms single dads married moms whatever always teach your kids about what thus said the Lord. Even though you're going to think they're not listening, a lot of times they may not be listening because in the day, the time we live in, they got that phone, they got that chip, they, 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 they're doing this, but you got to continuously tell your kids. I remember, let me tell you something about my mom. But the first recollection I started having as a kid, I was about five years old and my mama was teach. She was teaching me how to pray the Lord's prayer. Mm -hmm. And, and, and she told me, she said, come on, get down on your knees. And this, how you, and she started reciting the Lord's prayer. Our father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name that thy kingdom come, that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So she was teaching me the model prayer. And it's just when my mom passed away, she went to be with the Lord a year ago on our birthday, which was September the 19th. I was born September the 19th. She was born September the 19th. And she went to be with the Lord on September the 19th. And our last conversation that we had, she said, let mama pray for you. And that, and that, and I, I'll just, I'll never forget it. That, that was the first conversation I remember us having as a kid. As the first, when I was about four or five or six years old, and I started praying. What I was, I was, I started reciting, and then I said, "Lord, let me make it to the NFL." I didn't even know what the NFL was. I just knew I had a 
a fun for sports, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so I started praying. I said, Lord, let, let me make it to the NFL. And lo and behold, one day I ended up in the NFL. You know, I know that now, looking back on it, the NFL, when I got there, they told me it stood for not for long. Mm. Get, get your money, get your few years in, and then you go. You got to go. You got to get something. You got you to do something else. Uh, so, you know, my mom, she, she's an icon. I was telling Mr. Mr. Jackson about her. She is. She was an icon. She she was the first black female uh, uh, to get in line with the males over at Scott Paper Company. She was a supervisor for 32 years. She was, my mom would call me some holidays because like, I, I, I was the only one at the house. Uh, everybody else was gone. They were grown or whatever. It was in them teenagers. They were feeling themselves. Well, I was the only one there, I remember. And she would call me some, some holidays. She said, baby, she said, uh, uh, I th mama thought I was going to be home this evening because she would work seven to three. 3 to 11, 11 to 7. She said, Mama thought uh, Mama thought I was going to be home this evening for uh, Thanksgiving. Say Thanksgiving. May have been Christmas. I don't even remember. She said, but Mama got to work over. She said, Mama got to stay till 11 o'clock tonight. And she said, but you know where all the food is? It's in the refrigerator. And you just go in there and take care of yourself. And man, my, mom, my mom was, she was just a she was a legend. She was everything to, to the community. Everybody called her mama. Everybody loved her. Every mm -hmm. it was just I ain't want her to leave. Yeah. <laughs> when, she, <laughs> when she left it. But you know something? I'll tell you this. I, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this, Mr. Jackson. The, the person can die. It's just like Jesus Christ. They crucified Jesus. Mm-hmm. And they killed, assassinated Dr. Martin Luther King. The person can die, but the spirit mm -hmm. that the person left behind is going to live forever. So it's like, That's you know, it. it's like my mom, she ain't never passed away. God gave her to us, to me and us for 91 years. My mom died when she was 91 years old. God bless her heart. God, I still hear her talking to me. Just like she's still here, I just don't. I don't see her, you know. But I see her picture. And I don't like looking at her picture. I rather just hear her because mm -hmm. when I see her pictures, my eyes start to well up, and I started when you know I, I be wanting to see her. But I still hear her talking to me to this day, man. God bless her soul, rest her soul, and everything. And and I, I tell people, I tell people all the time. I say, listen, you know, if I could, uh, I. If I could ask my mama one question, I would ask her, Mom, do you want to come back? And she would she would say, No, she say, I miss you guys and I love all you guys, because it was seven of us. She said, But no, mama don't want to come back. <laughs> mama the, mama see you when you cross over to yes. glory. Because yeah. glory heaven is a beautiful place, place of everything, place of Rest, streets paved with gold, mansion and glory. And, you know, the word, the word of God says, eyes has not seen, nor has oh, yeah. ears heard, nor it's has it entered into the hearts of man, man. Yep. the but thing that God has prepared for us. So, knows, Mama, she's in a better place, and I I will physically see her one more time. I mean, again. Oh, mm -hmm. And before going to first, big shout, big shout out to James Burns out of Fort Worth, Texas. He said, hey, y'all, in the comment section. So big shout out to James. <laughs> him and his wife are also awesome, awesome people um, out of Fort Worth. So big shout out to him. We never want to forget those who are tuning in who are watching yeah. right now some live streams, of course, like that. Um, just listen to your story about your mother and how your mother. I, I just got to talk to my mom earlier um, before we got on the show. And just cherishing the times we have with our parents you know big shout out to my mom and my dad they're both still living and i always want to cherish these times while they still here and never want to live in regret of today you're here tomorrow you're gone but also saying at least i had that relationship there was no hard feelings it was no bad turns and knowing that if we whenever we depart we know that those things have been blessed so 
those you got your parents still living cherish your parents you know talk yeah, to them every day amazing. get a chance to make that make that time with them because tomorrow's uh, not promised so don't put off tomorrow we can do today and you mentioned the nfl and you know that that late 80s you went to the buffalo bills in the late 80s um i'm not a buffalo bills fan i'm a cowboys fan i always will be a <laughs> fan but you had the opportunity um to play for the buffalo bill and um take us to that journey Oh, when you first got drafted um, in the NFL. Uh, and I know that's a big accomplishment coming out of Alabama, Mobile, Pritch area to go uh, to the NFL. And I know they, they treated you like a, like a legend, an icon to make woo. us so take us through that journey. And I know Charlotte want to ask some questions as well also. So take us through that journey uh, when you first entered the NFL, knowing you are playing with well-known legendary players. Yeah, i tell you what, it, it was it was a uh... – it was people ask me all the time. They say, what, 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 what was it like playing in the NFL? And I, every time they ask me, I have to take a deep breath and, and just, whew. it was like a, a fantasy. It was like a, a dream. Like I was dreaming. I didn't like everywhere I went, everything was free. Every store I went in in the mall, all the shoes were free. Every restaurant I went, all the food was free. Everybody just was loving on you. They were, and they were just, um, you know, I tell people when I got to Alabama, when I graduated from Blunt High School in, in, in 88, it was like a fantasy. It was like a prereq to get into the NFL because when I got on campus in 83, it was like everybody treated treated us like celebrities, and we treated everybody like celebrities. You know, they were trying to help you graduate. Come on, man, let's come to this study session. Uh, she was saying, come on, come to this study session. I had my phone number, call me, and we're going to have a study session. And, get, and a lot of times we got to those study sessions, man, they already had the answers <laughs> to the <laughs> test. <laughs> So it was like a fantasy, Alabama, you know, and everything. I mean, it was just, you know, it, it, it is what it is, you know. So I, I just thank, I just thank God for allowing me the opportunity because when I got to Blunt High School in, in, uh, in, in 78, 79 or whatever it was, when I got there, we wasn't doing very much. We wasn't winning very much. We wasn't doing nothing. But the guy, all the guys I came up with through Little League football, through the Park League, we were like, we winners. We won everywhere we went when we were Little League. And then we got to Blunt High School. We like, we, I don't know what they were doing. We were just ready for them to go. So we could take, so we could take over. And then, you know, we, we went on a run, man. And, and we, we set the city of Pritchard on fire. You know, we were the first team in Blunt High School history to go to the playoffs. And that was in uh in my senior year in 83, man. We had the city on fire. They had they gave us a key to the city. And um and it was just it was a it was a heck of a ride, man. It was somebody keep calling my phone. I don't know what they want. But anyway, it was it, it was it was a heck of an experience, man. Then I got a chance to come home and play in the senior bowl in 1988. And um Everything, man. My life has been like a fantasy. Wow. You know, and I owe God everything that He's done in my life. You know. Then I, I, I after I left Buffalo, I went and tried out for the Indianapolis Colts, and I, uh, I didn't make that team. So I had a coach call me. He said, "Speak to Bo right." I said, "This Bo, we was on the landline then. We didn't have no cell phone." He said, I saw in the, in the papers where you got weighed by the Indianapolis Coast. You want to come down here to Tampa to try to make the team and work your way back up to the NFL. I was like, yeah, absolutely, Coach. He said, well, you're, you're gonna, I'm going to put your mail tickets, um, your flight tickets at the airport, and you can just come on down here. So I get on the flight, shoot, shoot down to Tampa, and uh, the team was moving from Pittsburgh to Tampa. And uh, we had a lot of ex-NFL players who were trying to work their way back up to the league, and I was one of them. And um, we we caught lightning in a bottle. As a matter yeah. of fact, we went on to be Arena Bowl champions in 1991. 
Uh, the, 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 team, the team was brand new. They had just moved from Philadelphia down to Tampa, and everybody was excited. And, you know, we had the Suncoast Dome where we played at. It was sold out every week. They were giving away houses. They were giving away trips to uh, Hawaii. They were giving away cars. They were giving away everything. And we, you know, we, we I tell, I tell uh, the, the people who follow Tom Brady, I never met Tom Brady or nothing like that. That we started that a long time ago, <laughs> before <laughs> before they uh, started winning championships. We were the first team down there to, to to win a championship. Then I came home to visit my parents. Wait, 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 I, wait, 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 no, wait, wait, wait. You getting into the nitty gritty? Wait a second. <laughs> Hold on. Wait. Right, Herman. Wait a second, because before we get to that, because that is what you're about to speak upon is a very pivotal time in your life, right? And it literally changed the trajectory of your life. So before we go there, I do have a question I wanted to ask before we talk about the change that happened in your life that really, really um, tells the tale, right? First of all, can we say shout out to your beautiful mother? who was born on September 19th, had her seventh beautiful child on the 19th, went home to glory on the 19th, uh, uh, 91 beautiful years, showed you nothing but work ethic, 32 years in the same year. She was a praying woman. And so it's so funny to me when you're like, God, my mother showed me how to pray. And so it's funny to me when you're like, I just asked to go into the NFL. I don't know how that happened. I just happened. Well, God said he will give us the desires of our heart, right? If we seek his righteousness first. So because your mother taught you the Lord's prayer, because your mother told you how to seek him first, you just simply speaking those desires of your heart, God actually granted you those things, right? So I think that is, we need to acknowledge that. That's where that came from, right? You didn't fall out the skies. I want to go to the NFL. No, you had a praying mother that knew Ooh. where to get the answers from. You had a praying Absolutely. mother covered you, even now covering you, right? So Absolutely. The, when the draft came, because I'm just trying to paint the picture of your beautiful family, the day of the draft, I want to know where your mom was. Your mom there? Was your dad there? Were all your six other siblings there? Was everybody around you? And what that anticipation was like? Because you went to the seventh round, brother. And then when Buffalo Bills called Bo Wright, was it mayhem? Was it somber? Was it like I don't know? Was there any corruption? I want to know. It was like a time bomb went off. Back then, the draft was uh, twelve rounds. They now they they've shown it to seven rounds, and and back then it was twelve rounds. It was a two day event, and um, we were all living off campus because we we were done with our Alabama football days, and and they get, had us apartments off campus and, and all of that, and 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 we had a our apartment was right across from the pool, so we had a draft party. And we had everything that, you know, uh, you know, just a draft party, all the food and whatever you want. And, uh, oh, and have mercy. People kept calling me. You got drafted yet? Because it, it was off TV. It wasn't on TV no more. The f- first few round was on TV. But then they kept, you call, no, I ain't got drafted yet. I ain't got drafted yet. I'll call you when, as soon as they call my name. So, for day one went by. I didn't get drafted. I'm like, wow. So I kept believing, kept believing. Mm. So the next day, I had some friends come over. They were bringing me gifts, all kind of short sets and outfits and all kind of stuff. Oh, you don't worry about it. You're going to get drafted today. I said, yeah, I hope so. So the next day came, and it, before we could even crank up or whatever, my phone rang. I answered it, the landline, cordless landline. Hello? He said, this is Chip, somebody from the Buffalo Bills. Wow. He said, Can I speak to Bo Wright? I said, Yeah, this Bo. And he said, We just drafted you in the seventh round. And boy, when he said that, life as I knew it, it just wow. it expanded. I ain't gonna say it changed. And I, and I can't say it changed, 
but it, I, I threw that phone up in the air like it was a baseball. <laughs> and I started running all over the apartment complex. I'm going to the Buffalo Bills, Buffalo Bills. And wow, man, I, I um, it, it was it was an amazing time, man. It was so just like a fantasy and continuation. Because when I got to Alabama, it was like a fantasy. And then when I got, when they called my name, it was like a fantasy. And, uh, man, I had an opportunity to marry my college sweetheart, Miss Angela Davis. You know, she's she's the the, the sister of Vivian Davis, the the uh, uh, Senate later. Oh, yeah, Senator. Yeah, yeah. yeah Senator. I, and I saw a thing about her, her son, Shamari, on the... Uh, I don't know what what do they call it? The news break. Shamar, Shamar, whatever his name, the younger guy. That he's mm -hmm. he, he's getting his life back together and everything. And I'm okay. glad to see that of him. He's running for some kind of district, some kind of senate, or something like that. But okay. you know, it was it was it was an outstanding thing, man. Uh, I think I give God the glory and uh for uh, for allowing me to experience such a beautiful life. And that's it. Before we go any further, we're going to go take a quick commercial break. And after that commercial break, we're going to jump right back into our Q&A conversation hosted by me and Charlotte of Houston, Texas, by very special guest, Bo Wright. So we'll be right back after this commercial break. <laughs> As a professional quarterback, I get a lot of shit. This, I, this is the red zone. Most overrated quarterback. You more turnovers than a bank sale! <laughs> and I get it. When you're not a fan of something, shitting on it can make you feel good. But what if I told you that now it can do some good too? Let me show you how. First, if you're 45 or older, talk to your doctor about getting screened for colon cancer. Then, if you're prescribed a home screening kit like this, grab the sample collection container and place a sticker of something you want to shit on right on the underside. Not a fan of marine life? Slap it on. Have issues with old timey prospectors? Boom. It works with anything from colors to large American predatory birds. Then follow the instructions on collecting and shipping your sample. Here we go! And in about two weeks, you'll have the results. It's that easy to get screened for colon cancer and make your feelings abundantly clear. So talk to your doctor today. Home screening kits like Colaguard are for people 45 or older of average risk, not for high-risk people like Dak. Dak actually wouldn't use a home test kit, but he's so committed to preventing people from getting colon cancer that he agreed to star in this video we wrote for him without any concern for his safety. I definitely deserve that. Visit leadfrombehind.org to get more information and some stickers we made. Hey, what's up, everybody? We're back here on the Walking This Wave Impact Boys podcast. I am Furman Jackson Jr., broadcasting out of DFW, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, along with my very special guest, Charlotte Houston, Texas. And our very guest tonight, well, today, of course, is former NFL player, college standout, Bo Wright. He awesome story. He's talking about his mother. Earth for those who missed, talk about his mother, the, the experience he went through the NFL, of course. And that transitioning of being a pro athlete, making it mm -hmm. um, to the to the NFL, and that's we know the NFL is a privilege. We know we have a lot of great um, players who were good in college, but never made that step to get to the NFL. But you want the one who was fortunate enough and blessed enough, and God bless you to be on that platform. And let's talk about with the financial of the situation. We know when the athletes, uh, Charlie, want to time in on that. When athletes get these big time contracts, they're very excited, you know, especially if you come from whatever background you came from. To when you get that first contract, I got to go buy everything, I got to go do this and do this. How was it when you first got that big contract? What would you deal with it? How was it getting out? Like I said, never seen that type of money before because we don't NFL play a lot of these great players, a lot of great money. They some say generational wealth. And we know some players went to them times where they blew it all, mm. and not, or they had got bad advice from people and blew it up. So let's talk about that too, the financial side of NFL. We got that big contract. And what kind of money was yeah. it? <laughs> I tell, I tell you what, I tell you what, Mister Jackson. You know, back when I was when I was in the league in '88, '89, we went to that first Super Bowl in Buffalo. 
there was like a financial supersize from then to now. Because back in when I played, the highest paid player in the league was our quarterback, Mr. Jim Kelly. Yeah, Jim Kelly. And he made like I think it was one point one million dollars. Yeah, that was a lot of money back then compared to that, that. Was, that, that, was, that was decent money back then because he had a mansion. We used to go over to his house after the games. He had bedrooms everywhere and everything. <laughs> just like a, like a, like a, like a uh, Six Flags uh, Disneyland or so. But anyway, you fast forward to 2024, you got these young men making $40 million a year. Yeah. That's like, that's like night and day. You know, I got a little nephew named uh, uh, Jacorian Bennett. He plays for the Vegas Raiders. I never met Jacorian. He's as my sister Geneva. That's Geneva's son, Mario. Mar that's Mario's son. But I never met Corian. I don't know. The money, I, t I put it like this. In my two years in Buffalo, I probably made about, about 200000 if I had to yeah. guess. Yeah, because that was a lot back then. Spent your late 80s, early. Yeah, that was a lot yeah. back then. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. God had given me the skill set where I could have played the game 10 or 15 years, died and, and, and I mean, retired and, and moved to South Beach, got an Oceanside condominium and, 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 and died and went to hell, never knowing who my Lord and Savior was, Jesus Christ. So mm -hmm. that then he didn't let that happen. I had the skill set to, to play the game. I was, you know, 230 pounds the size I am now. Uh, and I ran a four three forty. I could play every position on the field, and uh, but it, it just didn't work out like that, you know. So mm -hmm. I I thank God, you know, go, going through everything that I went through, being shot in the leg by a thirteen year old kid. They say thirteen. I said, yeah. They said, what are you doing with a gun? I said, I don't know. And um and losing my career and everything, Mister Jackson. I tell you, man, you know, going through everything I went through. I met my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mm. So Amen. I wouldn't, you know, it was a, it was painful for a 25 year old kid. I'm a 25 year old kid, you know. I, I'm grown according to the states of to the laws of Alabama, but in, in reality, you're a kid at 25. You don't know nothing. You know what you know, but what you know ain't the beginning of it. Mm. So right. I, I I met my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, going through everything I went through, and it was real painful. You know, going through what I went through, coming home to visit my parents and and being shot in the leg by a thirteen year old kid for whatever reason, no no apparent reason, because I didn't know him, he didn't know me. I, I put it like this: P people ask me all the time, what, "What was he trying to rob you or something?" I said, "Well, I don't know. I ain't I don't have five dollars with me. I was trying to buy a bag of weed. I had no business." That's another story, though. And uh, as a matter of fact, when I was getting out of the shower, my mama heard my keys rattling. And she say, where you going? I said, I'll be right back. I'm, she said, well, Keela called while you was in the shower. She said, I said, well, she know how to get in? Because I had a friend of mine. We were real tight friends. And she would come over and bring the yogurt. We eat the yogurt and walnuts and whatever and do what kids do. And um. And the night when when it when it happened, it was sort of kind of like the Tupac movie. I went on the all eyes on me. He told that little girl, he said, I'll be right back one hour. I told my mom, I said, I'll be right back. She said, Well, she called. I said, she know how to get in. So I left, went down there, almost never came back. Wow. I mean, it, it was it was it was something, man. I I let me tell you something. Cause when it happened, when I made the transaction and I started taking, I took a turn around. I took one, two, three, four, bah, shot went off. And I was like, my leg kicked up in the air like a horse, it just kicked up. And I just, I was, I just took off running. You know, my car was over there, but I ran the other way from the car. Cause I ain't know if they was going to shoot the car. I didn't know what, but I knew the little guy who was driving the car, his car, 
but I didn't know the other little thirteen year old kid sitting over there in the uh in the passenger seat. I didn't know him at all, man. Mm -hmm. It was it was it was heartbreaking. But you know, there's a scripture that says all things work to the good of those who love the Lord. And you have and you have to kind of put that in, in in perspective how everything twines together to work to the good because had it had it not happened, who knows where I would be now? You, or what you know I would what, be doing. You know what, Bo, you say something very profound um as you're speaking. And that I thank you for uh letting us know because I was gonna say, because of course I read your story and I but I didn't know we was out of pocket a little bit. I didn't know we were out of pocket a little bit. So my question is, okay. What do you mean when you say out of pocket? You know, you're like, you know, you know, up on a cut, you know what I'm saying? You know, da da da, right? Now, I don't know. Was there anything, <laughs> he's worth it. <laughs> was there anything that oh. you could not go, that, go there that day? Number one, was there anything that told you? not today was your mom even a warning not to go either way this is the thing that i wanted to say because you said something and i'm and i have to I, go ahead who are you, are you talking uh, go, ahead, go ahead go ahead oh, okay go ahead you said a scripture that i i was this is one of my favorite scriptures in the bible and it's romans uh eight and it says, 828 says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. This is my favorite part of the scripture. And those he predestined, he has also called. Those he, called, he also justified. And those who said. justified, he also glorified. Right? So you just saying that there's a that there's more to that scripture I had to talk about, right? Because whoever right. God is uh, predestined, Bo, right? He also right. called. Meaning right. that okay, okay, I'm going to allow you these highs of your life, but there's going to be something that's going to happen because I have called you to a different purpose. I have predestined you. I have called you. I have justified who you are, and I'm going to get the glory out of your story. So even wow. the, using that 13 year old child, right, who was out of his mind, a senseless act of gun violence that landed you in the hospital for not one day, not two days, not three days, not four, but 31 long days from a shot to the leg. Right. Now, wow. it wasn't a shot to your heart. It wasn't a shot to any major, you know, organ. It was a shot to your leg. The one thing that God gave you power into doing was using your legs, right? So now exactly. we're sitting in the hospital 31 days later, did Jesus meet you there? Did you meet, did Jesus meet you there or was it after your recovery? Well, I'll tell you this. <laughs> I was in that hospital for those 31 days. I was in ICU with a breathing apparatus on my face and had no idea what was going on was heavily sedated you know i t I tell you what the, the, when the shot happened i took off running i ran past my car and i ran past i stopped at a couple houses knocking on the door nobody answered mm -hmm. and i was on my way to try to turn and make the cut to go to my mama's house where i came from because i was i left my car over there and um and and I, I turned the corner going about three blocks to my mama's house and I couldn't make it. Everything locked up. I got all my organs and whatever. And I threw myself over this guy's fence and I started boom, 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 just knocking as hard as I could knock on his door. And uh, I didn't hear nobody. And uh, then he finally came to the door. He said, what's going on? I said, Call, I said, call the ambulance. I've been shot. He said, man, if you don't get off my porch, I'm going to let my dog die. I mm -hmm. said, oh, no, please. <laughs> I said, please don't let your dogs out. Yeah, so the next time I'm going to hear this. <laughs> 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 that yeah, man told me, 
I had to go back to that man house and thank him for everything that he did because I was laying up in the hospital. Let me tell you when, when, when I'll try to answer your question, if I can. I mean, I was laying up in that hospital. I was in ICU with a breathing apparatus on, and they were, uh, they were, they were, um, you know, going about going about their business. And I was in ICU for like probably about ten days. Then they moved me to regular population about after ten days. And, uh, and then my doctor came in there, and it was the year Alabama was playing Michigan in some bowl game down in Miami. And I asked my doctor, finally, with my legs split open on both sides to the red meat, on both sides of my calf, it's split. But anyway, I finally got my nerves up to ask my doctor. I was like, Doc, I could talk. I wasn't so sedated and, and everything. I said, do you think that I'm going to be able to play ball again. And I, that young man looked at me with a straight face. He said, I don't think so. Mm. And, you know, when he said that, my whole world, as I knew it, because I had, I still had aspirations of playing, playing more ball. Mm. But when he told me that, he then he started explaining the injuries and what happened and what it did and all of that kind of stuff and and uh it was it was it was a shock put it like that God, did tell you, you what, writing tell you what. make it worse did you writing make that make the uh injury worse you know that's a good question that i don't know mm -hmm. i had a guy i was showing the guy <laughs> showing the, one of the guys <laughs> some of the some of the, the scars or whatever and he was like what they, what they had to cut that? What what they did that? What that from? What what they did that? And he was asking, he said, you need to sue them. Uh -oh. <laughs> I said, no, nah, man. I said, I said, you're gonna let bygones be bygones, you know. I I still get an I still get an opportunity to to run, to work out, you know, and and try to keep my body up to date, keep it, you know, clean and sober and 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 still working out because like my mom when my mom passed away my mom was 91 years old she was still on that treadmill mm -hmm. at 90 89 whatever that up until she was she was still going so i come from a youthful tree and uh and it's just i came from such a loving family man so much love was in my family with my siblings and everybody it was just like one big i want to be married so bad i don't know what to do i want a family so bad i want a church home so bad i don't i just i want a church building i have a foundation called team new life and we educate kids on the dangers of drugs and alcohol and we teach them how to resolve conflict and the importance of proper nutrition you know, because my life is dedicated to these kids and, you know, they are the foundation for tomorrow and everything I can do to help them. You know, that's what I want to do. You know, people say, well, your life, your career was was ended by a 13 year old kid. You know, you know, some of these kids, they don't like I said, it takes the whole village. And I just want to do my part. Like Dr. Martin Luther King said, he said, I just want to do God's will. And that's all I want to do. Whatever I. And I, and I, I sub teach down in the, uh, in the uh, Mobile County Public School System when I was living there, and uh, you know, I wanted I wanted to change every kid, and then I had to come into the realization that I I, I it wasn't for me to change every kid because I'm like, boy, come here. One day, one one of my kids, he was doing something, picking with this girl, messing with this guy, and all kind of stuff, and I said, I said, come here. I said, sit down right here. So he sat down. And I said, what's wrong with you, young man? I said, you don't act like that. And he looked at me with a straight face. He said, coach, I ain't had my medicine. <laughs> you know, and kids, are they just so precious. They, they say the darnest things and, and they're so teachable. Some of them are so teachable because I tried to establish a rapport with them. Because I had a lady tell me a long time ago, she said, you got to reach the child before you can teach the child. And I, that made a lot of sense, you know. So I, 
I try to establish a rapport with them. You know, I try to meet them right where they are. You know, just the same way God do does us, meets us right where we are. You know, some people talk about, well, when I get clean up and going to church, just go to church, you know, and let the process be the process. And, um, you know, I give God all the glory, man. I, I, I'm just, my life now, I'll tell you what, my life right now is better than what it was when I was playing ball for the Buffalo Bills right now this day. I yeah, wouldn't if they said we're gonna go put you in a time machine and let you go back and we're gonna put you back in the NFL or you wanna stay where you are now. I said don't worry about the time machine. <laughs> I'm good right here. You know my, I, I love it man. I, you know it's just I'm in a learning season in my life. I do a lot of right. studying right. and you know I want to try to make some kind of invention. Some kind of, I don't know what kind of invention that, you know, we can become millionaires. Kingdom money. You know. Millionaires, kingdom money. I ain't talking about some millionaire strip club money or no, no foolishness like that. I'm talking about God's money. I try to be faithful to his money right now to the little bit. Right. You know, it's just like if I go, if I leave here, crank my truck up and go, and I see somebody that's homeless. First of all, I'm saying, Lord bless him, have my, because I remember that was me one time, and and, and I'm a I'm gonna try to give him some, if it ain't but th I try to give him at least three dollars. I said this for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, because when we look at the people, the homeless population, I didn't I didn't had dinner. I tell people I was telling somebody the other day, I didn't had dinner with the millionaires, people made millions of dollars, and I didn't had dinner with the people who used to panhandle. A panhandle, whatever. I done slept with mm. the millionaires. I done slept with the with the with the homeless people. And it ain't really no the only difference is so, some of them got money and some and, and, and the homeless people don't got money. They got an addiction, usually some kind of addiction. And um, you know, but I just I, people are people. I look at the homeless population like the the man in 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 front of the Circle K panhandling, he the 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 millionaire up there ain't got ain't no better than him, not in my eyes anyway. My mom, that's the way my mom raised us, and uh, she don't look over nobody, you know, because God can take the homeless man that's in front of the Circle K doing what he do, and he can raise him up to be the king of the city. And he could take the the the, the multi-millionaire and, and allow him to come down. So God is, you I mean God is if he want to do it, he can do it. That's what I believe. Now I could be as wrong as two left shoes, and I stand corrected <laughs> if I am wrong. But I, you know, that's that's the way I try to live life. You know, I try to I try to treat people. My mom always says, she said, Bo, you gotta treat people the way you wanna be treated. She said, Don't worry about how they treat you. She said, because the ones that do you bad, she said, it's not them anyway. She said, it's just the, the a spirit in the person that makes the person mistreat you or say something rude or act in any kind of ruly manner. She said, right. but you got to you got to sow seeds. She said, whatever seeds you sow, that's the harvest coming back to you. So if you're nice to people, if you're friendly with people, you're courteous. And if you're kind to people and if you're complimentary to people, she said that those are the same seeds going to come back to you. She said somebody's going to be courteous to you, kind to you. They're going to be complimentary to you. They're gonna, she, that, she said that's just the way it is. She said the kingdom of God is likened unto seed time, harvest time. So that's the mm -hmm. way I try to live. I tell you what, the other day I was at the, I was at the, I was at the uh, uh, Walmart. I spent a lot of time at the Walmart. And, uh, I was, you know, I'm always in there like, Hey, how you doing? You know, I like your hair. I tell all women, I said, you're beautiful because in my estimation, I was raised by a woman. Mm -hmm. So I look at all women as beautiful. You got to be beautiful to carry a seed for nine months. You might not be beautiful, quote unquote, in the natural, according to what man say beauty is. But you got to be beautiful to carry that seed for nine months. I, I I couldn't carry it for nine months. So you got to be some, 
you 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 got a mother's intuition. You got. I guess you're born with leadership skills. You got to be a leader to lead your child. And you know, I just that's just the way I try to live, man. You know, it is what it is. You know, I just take it and run with it. You know, I, that's that's the way I, I live my life. The word of God governs my life every day. It don't just govern my life on Sunday mornings. It governs my life every day. I want people, when they have an encounter with me, I want them to leave and go home or go wherever they're going and say, it was something special about that young man. That's all. I want. I don't want, it ain't no kind of put on. It's who I am. You know, I was talking to one of my buddies one night. He's, we talked for like five hours. Looked at the call, t call duration, said five hours and 42 minutes or something. And he said, you got the gift of charisma. I, I said, well, I know what charisma is. I said, but what is the gift of it? And uh, he said, well, people are just drawn to you. And, you know, nobody ever told me that before. You know, and, and, and if it's, he said, he said, and people want that gift. He said, but they ain't got it. I said, I don't know. I don't know nothing about all that. I said, that's the way my mama raised us. Because I remember when we went into the restaurant business down, downtown Mobile, Alabama, my mom would let homeless people sleep in her restaurant that didn't have nowhere. We had this little guy named Dave. He worked in the restaurant, and Dave didn't have nowhere to go. He was homeless. He wasn't even from the city of Mobile. And mama let Dave sleep in that restaurant. As a matter of fact, she brought him home because mama owned like one, two houses on the street, three houses on the street. And she would let him sleep at the house across the street. It had a lot of junk in it, a lot of stuff. It was like a storage house. And she would let him sleep in her house sometimes. And sometimes she would let him sleep in the building. You know, so I just, I try to just be, I just want to be a good man, a good person. You know, I ain't got to be famous. I ain't got to be a millionaire. Even though I believe one day I'm going to be a multimillionaire. You know, if God sees fit for it. And if he doesn't see fit for it, that's cool with me. Because if he doesn't do it, it ain't like, it ain't like he can't do it. So I got some ideas. I heard Master P, he say, broke people think about money. <laughs> he said, rich people think about possessions. He said, and, uh, what does he say? He said, and wealthy people think about inventions and ideas. So I'm trying to create some ideas, trying to get like Mr. Jackson and get into this streaming business and all of that kind of stuff and try to be, be the best, but, best man I know how to be. Hold that thought, hold that thought. Hey, yo, oh, yeah, hold that thought, but we got to take another quick commercial break. And after uh, the commercial break, we're going to jump right back into our Q&A conversation. I've always been told that I'm too small. I'm not big enough. I'm not fast enough. I don't have what it takes. I prepare so no one can take what is mine. No one can replace my mind, my heart. To be the best and stay there, sweat is necessary. I'm older. Of course I'm older. That's the beauty of it. 16 years plus. Different level of wisdom. Different level of understanding. Different level of punishment. I want to live long after my records have fallen. Long after my rings have tarnished. And whatever you got to do to make sure you chase your legacy every second of your life. Who would you be remembered? How would you be remembered? Why wouldn't you fight for the greatest achievement ever? Leave your Mark to endure forever. Hey, what's up? We're back here on the Walking This Ways afternoon special. I am Fermin Jackson Jr., along with my lovely, beautiful sister, Charlotte Houston, Texas, with our very special guest out of my hometown of uh, Mobile, Alabama, Bo Wright. Don't let you know that. <laughs> it, it won't be, it won't be no, I won't be doing the show tonight. That's why I'm doing the show early today. So it won't be no show tonight. I'll be on another platform at 8 p.m. Big shout out to Stephanie. Um, I'm doing her platform at eight, so it would not be a show tonight at seven. That's why I'm doing the show earlier today. And I also will be back here Saturday morning, of course, at 10 a.m. on the Walking This Way platform. Um, we got a lot of great guests lined up for the month of what is it, March? Well, March, right? March <laughs> in the month of March. Yeah. Uh, I have a very special guest coming on at the end of the month. Um, she was a, a, a porn star in the in adult film industry. She's gonna be coming on. 
she went from porn star to entrepreneur. She could be sharing her story. Um, she's well known, uh, dope film actress. I'm very excited about that coming on the show. That's what I love about this show, and I love what God is taking this show the transparency, uh, Shiloh, with all these guests that's coming on with different mm -hmm. from every different walks of life. Mm -hmm. When they see the walk in this way, they say, Is it just Christian? No, it's not that. We want to like everybody to come on to share their story, to share their testimony. That the transparency that's what i like about shallow the transparency now yeah. people are taking the masses off now they're coming um not there with what strip to say the bible said adam e was naked and unashamed we get into that time now where we're becoming naked and unashamed it was a, it was a long time ago we was exactly. afraid to share the stuff that we went through the stuff that we experienced now the boldness god has given a lot of people boldness now mm -hmm. to come mm -hmm. and say hey I'm an ex. I'm a sick. I'm an ex addict. I'm an ex prostitute. I'm an ex homosexual. I'm an ex this. I'm an ex that. And sharing their stories will be helping people now. They're mm -hmm. taking a mask off. I remember years ago, oh. did an episode called Beauty and the Beast. I had an ex porn star, an ex prostitute, an ex homosexual. They would <laughs> share their stories, and people was coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, saying thank you. For sharing this, thank you for putting it out there because this is something I was dealing with from my life. We had people who've been molested who mm -hmm. was afraid to share the story, and then we have Bo Wright on here who was incarcerated when I met him, and he's sharing his story and not being ashamed because we have when you do shows, people I don't want to talk about that, but no, why not talk about it when you help mm -hmm. someone else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's our testimony. There's Absolutely. power. There's power in our testimony, right? Yeah, and right. so God takes so many messes and makes masterpieces out of them, right? Yeah, right. We look in the Bible and we will oh, see how different people, you know, oh, they were in their worst condition and God took them and he made them, you know what I'm saying, to be pillars in in, 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 in history, right? Even with yourself, Mr. Bo, right? God, yeah, you were on a great path. And then, you know, something happened that changed that so that God's greater purpose can come out of you, you know, and it, it comes in ways that we didn't know that it would come. And so I am really interested in how you actually landed in jail, you know, because let's talk about it. We're going through this process. If we have time for it from, I'm not real sure. Yeah, we got time. We got time. We're going through this process. You know, you come from a great family, uh, you know, your mom teaching you how to pray early. You actually, now you're in, 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 in sports and guys get your family. Family, get your kids into sports, get them into things, team sports. That's going to build great character in them if you can, if that's something they enjoy doing. But anyways, you're doing all of these things, boom, tragedy happens, right? You're at the height of their, their life. You go home for just a little bit, haven't been there for eight years. You go back to your hometown and boom, little, a little transaction tra turned up to be, you know, it almost cost you your life. Now, 30 yeah. days, uh, the doctor's like, no, it's not going to happen again. So I'm assuming that you had some kind of identity crisis. Can we talk about identity crisis here? Because yeah. many times your identity can be uh, into what you do, right? I'm a football player. It's who I am. You know, that's what I do, right? Or me, I'm in radio. It's what I do. But something yeah. happens that allows you to have this identity change. And so when did you have, I'm sure you had an identity crisis. So can you tell us just real briefly what that looked like and if that identity crisis landed you in depression into substance abuse and harmful uh, uh decisions well I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what i went from the hospital dope to the street dope mm. and i had no mm. clue there, it goes. there was no generation in front of us to show us what it was like I was just trying to cope with life anyway. Because the lady, my nurse, one of the head charge nurses, she used to tell me, because I used to be calling for med med medication. She said, we just gave you your medication 10 minutes ago. I said, well, I don't care. I'm still in pain. <laughs> and, then, and then she kept telling me, she said, well, let me tell you something. Uh, I'm going to give you this medication. She said, but I want you to know that it is highly addictive. Mm. She said, and and and, and you go. It, it, I I don't know when you leave us. You know what what the deal gonna be. But anyway, to make a long story short, I went from the hospital dope to the street dope. Mm. 
Mm. And with the street dope came the life style and everything with it. Mm. All like the devil said, I'll take you up to this high mountain and show you all this. Mm. So with the with the uh I wish they had stopped that. So with the street dope came all the glamour, mm. all the different whatever. Mm -hmm. females and all the different limelight and all just all I, I became addicted to the streets mm -hmm. to to cocaine crack cocaine powder mm -hmm. cocaine marijuana alcohol mm -hmm. just foolishness wow pastor Thresh, my pastor Thresh, he said foolishness mm -hmm. so i became addicted to foolishness Mm. So the word, what of God it, the word of God called it lasciviousness. Yeah. I became addicted to lasciviousness. Mm. And uh and I, I I God allowed me to go down that road mm. until I got to the end of that road. Mm. I got to the end of that road and I said, Father, mm. if this is the life I've got to live, mm. I said, if I gotta live in these conditions. I said, you might as well call me home to glory. Mm. And truthfully, I didn't even know if I was going to glory. Mm. I just know I was tired of living in those conditions. I mm. wasn't raised like that. Mm -hmm. Mama didn't raise us like that. None of that. Mm -hmm. You know, we I didn't grow up in that environment. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know about that environment. Only thing mm -hmm. I knew was going to football practice, coming home, doing their homework, yeah. making the honor roll. Yeah. I was on the honor roll list. <laughs> I was on the honor roll list. Yeah. You know, we call at, at, at Manny T. Blount High School, we called the straight A, straight A students list. Yeah. I was on the straight A students list. And, you know, and that was all I was familiar with. Mm -hmm. And I wanted so bad to get back to that life. Right. And I can say right. now I'm on that life. I'm living that life. And I wouldn't trade it for nothing. I got mm -hmm. a friend of mine. He uh he's been clean and sober for like seven years. And uh he I say, what you gonna do with all them cars out there? He said, Man, I bought me a car for every year I've been clean and sober. Wow. He said, I bought I bought me a car for every year I've been clean and sober. And um you know, it, it it ain't nothing like it, man. It ain't nothing like walking in your purpose, mm -hmm. walking in your calling. It's such a, it's like a surreal life. It's like, like I'm living a fantasy. Mm, God it's like, not, it's like, it ain't the football fantasy. It's it's just the, the fantasy of life. Mm. You know, I wake up like with expectations every day. I know that God is going to send me a wife any day. Mm. I know that. I mean, I just, I'm, I'm going to just, because I'm an Ephesians 3.20, baby. Ephesians 3.20 says, unto him who's able, able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. And I, I, I ask God for big things because I'm used to having big things. Mm -hmm. And I'm used to, you know, I, I, I like to network with people and I like to share things with people. I remember one Christmas like I had, my mom and them bought me two bicycles. And I was letting everybody else ride one and I rode the other one. You know, I, I just like to, I want to see people happy. Yeah. I want to see people living in joy, laughing, because I like mm -hmm. to laugh all the time. I, I like to just laugh, crack jokes, and, and I, you know, because the word of God says laughter is like medicine to the soul. So I want to yeah. be, you know, just all that God created me to be. When I leave here and go home to glory, I want my tank to be empty. I want to be loved on everybody because that's how my mom, my mom, like I said, my mom raised us. I want to have loved on everybody Give gave everybody some ideas or inventions or or uh, led them to Christ. I was I was in Walmart. I was in Walmart about five or six months ago, right over there in Bessemer, and um, I, I went back to the pharmacist and I was asking the, the little girl. I said, "What the chapstick?" The stuff I got right. 
Chapstick. She <laughs> said, she said, <laughs> Chapstick is over there. She's a pretty little girl. She's about, she's like, she's about 19, 20. And I said, uh, I said, I said, I'm going to how the conversation go. I said, uh, I said, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? That's what I said. I said, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And she was like, no. And I said, because usually when I ask people that, they, first thing they say is yes. Yeah, I do. And uh, I asked her, I said, you, do you know him as your Lord? She said, no. I said, well, do you want to know him as your Lord and Savior? And she said, yes. And when she said that, my heart dropped. I was like, wow. Because you, you'll ask a hundred people and you'll get one out of a hundred that says yes. That, that says that they don't know Jesus. Everybody know him. A claim they know him anyway. They know of him. Right. But it's one thing to know of him and it's another thing to be walking in your gifts and your talents. But that's a whole nother topic. And, oh, yeah. and I just, I say, well, you just, will you repeat after me? I say, Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess Jesus as Lord and you believe that God used the Holy Spirit to raise him from the dead, then according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9, you are, you are saved. So she said it, she said the sinner's prayer and gave her life to Christ and to God be the glory, man. Amen, amen. amen. Thank God for that, for that moment, you know. Uh, and I met another lady now. She said, baby, you're a kingdom builder. <laughs> I said, whatever that is. I didn't know. She, I was telling her what happened. She was an elderly lady. And uh, I was telling her what happened, telling her the same story that I just got through telling you and Mr. Jackson. And she said, baby, you're a kingdom builder. Amen. I said, wow. You know, I just want to, you know, I want to do the best I can do every day of my life. You know, I try to live every day like, like it's my last day. Cause you don't know you one day it's gonna be your last day. Yeah, yeah. We all have we all have a check out. We all have so a check out. Full of full of fun, full of joy, full of love. I like to laugh. I like to work out. I like to I like to watch them Christian networks. I don't watch all that internet stuff. All that I don't want nothing to television will tell you a vision. That's why they put all them internet movies on on you got a fifteen thousand movies. I said, what is all this? I said, what are my local channels? Why well, can get TBN? Why well, can get the news? Why well, can get this? I said, I don't want to see all them shoot them up channel. Everybody shooting a gun. Brr, they just shooting at everybody. And what they shooting at, who they trying to kill, I don't know. But that internet is really got a grip on, on, on the United States. I went one time, I was downtown Mobile. Or out there on the, I was out there on the belt line. And I said, Google, I said, what's the, what's the phone number to Google? And they said, eight, six, 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 six. I said, what? Is that the mark of the beast or what? But that Google, it, it's something serious, you know? I mean, it serves its purpose for the people that know how to use it. But for the kids that don't, it's it's a bad tool to put in the hand of a individual, you know. Oh, yeah. Some people say, know that. "Yeah, but that's know a whole, that's whole another, yeah, that's a whole another broadcast." So, full going in front of the child. Um, be shout out to uh, Data in the comment section. He's a recording artist here in Dallas, in Dallas, Texas. Be shout out to him on the YouTube side. Um, big shout out to Horace Myrick on the face on the um, YouTube side. Horace Myrick, that's my homeboy. Uh, big shout out to him. Big shout out to Internet Homes on the Facebook side. The hello. Um, big shout out to her as well. Um, like I said, we're about to agree to get off this thing. I got it. So I got a schedule I got to keep up with. But I appreciate you both for hanging out with us. Um, before we go any further, um, Charlotte, you have anything you want to plug in before we ready to leave the air? Man, you know what, uh, Furman? I just want to leave with this scripture because I think it's so important that we we follow God's rules about our lives. And Bo, I'm so proud of you that you have taken on, uh, you know, your purpose and living for God. And guys, this is the last thing I just want. You know, if you a plug if you need any financial planning guys that is exactly what i do i help families earn more income become properly protected debt free and financially independent and having your financial house is so very important so i'm licensed here in texas can help you with those needs but i want to leave with this verse um with this verse um Furman. it's love in action and it's romans 12 9. 
And it says, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Come on, somebody. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. So, Bo, as long as you continue to love sincerely, put God first, seek his righteousness in all that you do, he will continue to open up the doors that no man can shut. He will continue to open and pour you out a blessing that you're, that will overflow your cup, that you will be able to give to more and more people. I truly believe that your purpose is just beginning. And I thank God for you coming on this broadcast because God is going to do something incredible and amazing just by coming on here yeah. and sharing what God has done for you. I totally, totally believe that. And so Furman, thanks so much for always being faithful and always being here and consistent for the people. Wow. That's awesome. Well. awesome. That's awesome. Appreciate wow. you as well. I say keep with the great work humble that you're doing out in Alabama. Go ahead. I just want to say I want to just add this on to it because it's in my spirit that before the foundations of the world, God knew you. He told Jeremiah and he's telling everybody that's in the sound of my voice, I knew you. So don't argue with, if God told you to do it, go ahead and do it. Don't be like the, the, the Laodicean church, lukewarm. He says, because if you, you're neither hot, nor you, you neither, you neither cold, nor you're hot. You just stagnant. You just in the way. He says, then you, I'll, I'll have to spew you out of my mouth. So find out what your spiritual gifts and your spiritual talents are. And then put it in operation. Let the process begin. Every, everything is a process. You're not going to, it's just like going to school. You're going to start in the first grade and then you're going to work your way up to graduation. So the same thing in the spiritual world, you got to start the process. Don't, ain't no sense in delaying it no longer. You ask God, get involved at your lo- with your local churches and, and, and get find out what your gifts and your talents are. And start to put them in operation. Let the process begin. Because let me tell you something. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Because if, if our gifts and talents aren't being used, then God going to say, part from me, I never knew you. And I don't, I don't wish that on nobody. You know, because we're all equal in the sight of God. But we're all different. So find out what's, go- what's happening. And get, get, get going with your, with, your, with your gifts and your talents. And let God be God. Man, it's so nice meeting y'all, man. Y'all got the bomb show. Oh, oh, the God's in the glory. And you are so educated. Mr. Firm, Mr. Firm, Mr. Jackson, you educated. All oh, y'all educated. I got to get get it, get, get, in, get in, be able to get in touch with you guys. Because I'm trying to get my book republished. And oh, I don't man, know man. how to go. Uh, don't worry about it. I talked to um, Marquise. Um, like I told you, I talked to him not so long ago. He wants you to connect with him about your book and stuff. So I okay. told you about it. So he wants you to connect with him. So I'm um, going to see you. I, matter of fact, I sent you his information DM. So go ahead and connect with him and he'll let you know what you need to do. Yeah, I'll just take it from there. Also, okay. um, with the finances as well, I got Charlotte here as well. Um, she helped me with my. The Rough RA and all the other great stuff that I got going on too. And um okay. she's an awesome, awesome so get and plug in with that with the finances, especially entrepreneurs who entrepreneurship and all this stuff. Yeah, y'all make sure y'all got y'all stuff in order. And then and then when we gonna do part two. This gotta be this is a continuation. Uh, we'll <laughs> we part we'll two. <laughs> so you we'll just do. let me know. I'm ready for part two, whenever you ready. <laughs> okay, we'll, set, we'll set a part two up. Like I got a schedule I got to stick to. That's all about the okay. structure. I got a schedule I got to stick to. So yes, yeah, sir. I understand that. Yeah, we didn't know how to do it. Just whenever you get, whenever you, whenever you, uh, when God leads you to do it, then we. Oh, yeah, it's, I'm it's ready. Gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Okay. It's gonna happen soon. So like I said, we got to lead this thing, man. Y'all enjoy your afternoon. Enjoy your day. Enjoy wow. your Wednesday. Um, go hang out. It's a beautiful day. I, I went to the gym this morning. Got my feet done. Got my hair cut. Let's go, Furman. 
It's all about having fun and stuff like that. And also, hey, shout out to William Robinson. Your oh, homeboy, William Robinson. Oh, yeah. Big shout out to Mr. Rob, Mr. Robinson there. Willie Robinson. Big shout out to him. He's a former athlete, too, as well. Oh, oh big shout out to Big shout out to Maria. Maria said, have a blessed day, everyone. Big shout out to everybody's coming with all their love and stuff. Big mm -hmm. shout out to Maria as well. And like I said, we'll be back here. I won't be on here tonight. I'll be on another platform at 8. So y'all tune in with that at 8 o'clock. We don't know what it's going to be talked about, but we know it's going to be fun. So, man, y'all enjoy y'all wings to get out. Enjoy the day. It's a beautiful day. I know it's a beautiful day yeah. here in Dallas. I know it's probably also in Houston as well. Yeah. And, of course, more busy. Y'all get out. Go to the bookstore. Go walk. Go walk. Just enjoy life. And you have any wow. financial um, concerns, get with Shiloh. Yeah. He is licensed in that area. Mm -hmm. um, it's time to get you. No, think long term. Especially to, I'm, talk, I'm talking to the fellas. To the fellas. Mm -hmm. Think long term. Think about, you know, you mentioned, Bo, you want to get married. Um, that's you no know, part of you no know, marriage. You no, know, having her protected, household protected. Just get God forbid mm -hmm. something happened to you. Mm -hmm. The finances would be there. Well, that's something that we think about in our community. But I'm glad Shallow is on, raised buddy. up to better do about that stuff. So y'all have any questions, give a shout out today about yeah. get your RFI going. Don't just focus on your 401k at your job. Mm -hmm. Get I'm telling you what's going on and help me with this shout out before we get off yeah. the air. I remember they always told me there's not no gonna be no more social security in my generation. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing it come to pass. Mm -hmm. There is not going to be no more social security, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Now it's in a bill and you can look this up. That if you owe student debt, they're gonna take your social security. Mm. <laughs> wow, they implemented it in the bill. So, y'all need to go ahead and stop thinking about your finances, mm -hmm. start getting any other accounts, tax free money. Yeah, and then that money will always be there, just not just for time whenever you need it, it'll always be there, and mm -hmm. you don't miss it because mm -hmm. I'll have Charlotte with me, and I have an amount that I go in every every week, of course, and every month, every month, and it's constantly growing. Yeah, it is. You'll see, and it's constantly growing, and you don't even miss it. So proud. So I, oh, I'm, I'm proud of you too for helping me out. But like I said, <laughs> go ahead and get the stuff. I'm telling you, there's not going to be no more social security. I'm telling you, they implemented in the bill that if you owe student loan debt, they're going to take your social security. They're going to get their money one way or another. Wow. Be mind for that. So get yourself together. So when you can reach that, I'm doing good. Your your social security gone. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. don't rely on Social Security. Get that Roth IRA going. That's tax free yeah. money yeah. you get. But shall I break it down? Go ahead. Yeah. Everything today. Just gonna break it down right quick. So listen, you are absolutely correct. It's so important that we are building our financial houses properly. So many times we want to go get the other houses and things, but we don't build our financial house properly. We don't have enough life insurance to protect us. We don't have you know an emergency fund or Roth IRA or college fund or adult funds for our children. We don't plan for our goals and dreams. But guys, with a plan, you can do all of those. People don't plan to fail. They just fail to plan. And so wow. I am a financial coach that you did not know that you need, because how do you win the money game if you don't know the money rules? And just right, Furman, since you've been taking my advice, you got some things popping and I'm so proud of you. So we're going to keep on that same road. And then when it's time, we're going to get some more things popping. Right. So, guys, right. I want to do exactly the same thing I'm helping Furman do. And that's just to get control over his finances and be empowered by doing that. And you can by education. So thanks so much, Furman, for that shout out. And I'm here for any of your questions or concerns that any of you may need. And that's it. So like I said, we'll be back here now on this platform, another platform at eight. <laughs> but like I said, I got a free the game. I got a 10 to F5. So I'm because the one right. day on time. I got to go pick some up. So man, y'all have a great day. We'll be back here tonight. Now, now I'm walking this ways, but another right. platform at eight. All right. I'll tune Thanks. in for that. And um, have a great day. You too, Furman. Love you, you too, man. God right. bless you. Love you. Take Thank care. you so much. You're right. so nice and pretty.
said yet, yet you still love me.